Hello guys, welcome back to another one of my uh, tech videos for the Daniel's uh, Tech World Medium channel and my YouTube account. Um, so for this video today, I wanted to take a look at MultiCloud. Um, MultiCloud is an interesting tool and it's kind of, I've been thinking a little bit about it this week just because I have been on a uh, backup, backup bonanza, I guess you could say, of taking backups and making backups. Um, I've written about backups a little bit. Uh, it's probably something nobody really wants to think about, but it is good to think about it because, um, well, if stuff goes wrong, then you'll be happy you did, basically. So I've written about the 3 2 one rule for backups about how if you have your primary data source, like your computer or your uh, you know a server on your network or, or whatnot, um, that you should always have two copies of that, two copies on different storage media. I'm working down the 321 system here. That means, for example, that if you have your uh, computer and you're going to take two backups, well, let's say one of those is on a drive in your computer, a backup drive, which is a perfectly legitimate way to create one backup copy. The other one could not be on the same storage media. So that could be, for example, putting that on a uh, external drive. And if you just think about the practical reasons for all this, it actually makes a lot of sense that if uh, God forbid you um, your computer was zapped in a lightning surge or something like that, and all the you know connected drives in the computer were completely fried. Um, if your two backups are just on different drives, and that wouldn't make a lot of sense, but just say they were, uh, then you would have no backups. If, on the other hand, you had your uh, backup sitting in a tech cabinet or just you know a tech cabinet or something else. Um, then that might survive that lightning strike. Um, and then the final the final step in the 321, the one stands for one offsite copy. So you should you should have one copy of your one backup copy of your primary data repository that is stir stored uh, offsite. Um, so that's something like in the cloud, it could be in your office, it just needs to not physically be in the same place as your primary and your first backup copy. So coming back to these kind of far-fetched scenarios of why that might be useful if you take the case of uh, a house that, I don't know, the, the, the house caught fire, again, God forbid, um, your house caught fire, and that would mean that everything would be, would be gone, your computer would be gone, your um, first backup, even if that was you know somewhere else in your house, would obviously be in Cinders as well. And in that case, if you had something uh, offsite, whether that was in your office or on a, uh, you know, it could be a, it could be like, a, it could be a private cloud. It could be a server you run in your office, or it could be a uh, commercially run cloud service. Like for example, AWS S3 or Google Cloud Storage or Azure or whatever, you, whatever, whatever you're comfortable using, whatever you are using. Um, the point of all this, uh, of all this, um, a preamble here is to basically say that this should also be applied to cloud storage. Um, cloud storage is a bit more debatable as to whether you need to back it up at all because the whole advantage of a cloud and what is a cloud is kind of a misnomer. A cloud is just a publicly uh, managed data center really. It's somebody, else, it's somebody else's server. Uh, but that, that has quite a lot of advantages that somebody else is managing the server. It's a professional server. It's a managed server. Um, the where the data center which the server lives in is going to have power redundancy and stuff like that that would just be kind of impossible uh, to really set up adequately and cyber security i should have added added, added to that list um so you can't really replicate that in a home environment um but at the same time uh it is prudent and best practice and uh, i would say you know take backups of all everything that you're in any way uncertain about even if it's that's like a hosting company, uh, you know they might not be. They might provide backups, but they will not be responsible if you screw up. Um, if you screw up your stuff on the cloud and it gets destroyed, so don't. In order to not rely on um, the backups of other people and to keep your own, uh, to keep your own stuff your own, uh, this is a reason why backing up clouds is good. So multi cloud comes into this picture because it's a cloud to cloud. Um, backup service basically. So MultiCloud works basically you're just adding your clouds into MultiCloud and then you're using it to sync and move stuff across. So I subscribed to this uh, service premium for many years, a little bit embarrassing that I'm uh, now on the uh, freebie tier. Um, the, free, the freebie tier uh, I'm on it now because I don't really use this all that often anymore. 
Um, and the advantage of getting it to a paid one, I think, is you just got better um you got better backup uh more options as we'll see shortly in the type of th sync and the uh, and the limit is higher it's worth pointing out just one thing while we're talking about cyber security it's w one concern about the service that i certainly have and i'm not really using it for anything majorly sensitive so i'm not super worried about this for that reason but uh you know it, it would be it is prudent to just kind of investigate the company behind anything that has access to your data. So as you can see in the footer here where my cursor is, this is made by a company called Aomi Tech. Um, and uh, you can go onto the website and check out their uh, not super glowing reviews on Trustpilot. And I certainly have a bit of questions, particularly I think it's a Taiwanese company. It's either Taiwanese or Chinese. I can't tell what these, the difference between these three uh, variants of that alphabet are. Uh, I'd be a little bit kind of concerned about that and I imagine that some uh, companies would not be able to use a tool like this just for that very reason that it would be considered questionable. Um, they do say that they manage your data, whatnot, carefully, wonderfully and all that, but um, you know, it's, it, it's basically up to you as to whether you want to rely upon um, what companies say and, uh, and take it as unquestioned truth or whether you're not going to do that. So just that's just kind of a side note about this thing um so let me with that as with that aside let me show you the whole how this works so basically you you create your cloud you kind of just create your own little cloud network here and again this is this is for cloud to cloud backups so this is the use i'm showing uh demonstrating for it um the advantage of cloud to cloud as opposed to uh home to cloud let's say is that typically uh, cloud stuff is closer to the core of the internet, so you have faster exchange speeds. I know, for example, that my upload, uh, my uplink here at home is um, pretty terrible. It's like two megabits per second, and that makes transferring multi, even you know, ten gigabyte transfer could take something like ten hours. So it's not really feasible. Um, when you're using cloud to cloud, uh, you might find that you're you're moving data quickly over a good protocol between two good data centers and that can really speed up and their uplinks might be as fast as your downlinks. Um, so basically in terms of the cloud coverage here um, that Mole Cloud offers, it's pretty good. Um, I would divide it into a few different tranches. Uh, you have your main, cons let's say, the, let's call these consumer facing, um, um, you know, clouds, your Google Drive, all the major ones, Dropbox, Dropbox for business. OneDrive, uh, they have the main ecosystems all covered nicely here, Microsoft, Google, Dropbox, as well as a couple of more obscure ones. As you can see, I'm a fan, a massive fan actually of pCloud. They also have Mega. And then they have, uh, that's that category. Uh, don't forget OwnCloud, OwnCloud is pretty cool. Um, and then they have the next one I would say is these kind of like individual services. You're looking at Flickr, you're looking at Evernote, you're looking at, uh, that would really be it. In terms of the biggies, then the you know the big professional places to put your data, they have those two. Uh, most importantly, I would say for my purpose, they have S3. Uh, they also have Backblaze and they have WebDAV. WebDAV is a kind of slightly old school uh, protocol, HTTPS protocol, uh, for transferring stuff into WebDAV servers. Um, so that's really it. And in terms of FTP, worth pointing out that they uh, they do support SFTP over port 22. Uh, so if you're concerned about the security of unsecured FTP transfers, as you should be, uh, then you should know that you can use this to to drive FTP transfers across port 22, uh, use over S SFTP. So basically connecting stuff is just a case of, um, you know, uh, if you just want to create an S3 bucket, for instance, uh, you can just, um, if I can get back to where I was for a second, add cloud drive and uh, you know go into Amazon S3 and you'll just need your access key ID and your secret key and the bucket name. You don't actually need the, um, you don't need the uh, location uh, in which, you know, which SW3 region it's in. Um, so that's that. And then once you have them connected, now I'm just gonna show you what you can do and just kind of what I'm doing, the various permutations of what's possible for backups. So let's say I want to do, um, let's actually go into sync over here. Um, I want to, Cloud Explorer, by the way, just lets you look into clouds and see what's there. So let's take a use case here of I'm backing up my P cloud. And you know, this is one cloud data source I'm using. 
Uh, so according to my 321 methodology, I should be keeping that two copies of it. Uh, to keep the first copy, um, keeping that somewhere locally is pretty simple. I would just, you know, um, I can just compress pCloud into a nice little tar or tar GZ or zip archive and keep that either on my computer or I can keep it on an external drive. And let's say oh, I also want to keep it somewhere in the cloud, somewhere else in the cloud, I should say. Um, so that if pCloud were to uh, lose all their customer data tomorrow, I would have a um, I would have a copy of it somewhere. So, so your source volumes on your left and your destinations on your right. Um, and what you can do is you can do a two-way sync or a one-way sync, um, and you can just give it a nice description here. So I'm going to call this pCloud to S3. And this is kind of something I actually do use all the time because S3 is just so affordable for storage, and I think that for the small cost. Um, e you know, even if you could argue that there's no point backing up your Google Drive or your Microsoft Office or or, or what have you, basically, um, I think that for a few dollars per year or a few tens of dollars per year or whatever it comes to for your storage costs in S3, um, I think it's very smart to have them somewhere else in the cloud. And I'm not trying to uh, maybe a bit immodest to call myself. Very, this really isn't isn't my idea, and I'm sure there are alternative approaches, but this is one that just does a trick pretty easily in the grand scheme of things. So this is a backup I've made for my cloud backups and I'm just gonna I've created a little folder here. Now the little kind of workaround trick is if you're on the uh if you're on the unpaid tier, um uh what you can do is just create three subfolders here. Uh and you could call those uh you know you could call those for example this is P cloud. Now this is there's P cloud here because I've got a I've done something weird in my P cloud for uh, backup purposes and created another folder called pCloud at the root of pCloud. Usually you wouldn't have this. Um, you could have, for example, weekly. Um, then build out another folder called monthly. Do you get me? And then another one called daily. And you could just kind of have three snapshots uh, running at all times and just create a sync from a daily sync to this one, a monthly sync here, and a weekly sync here. Uh, I'll just nuke these after the video is done, um, right? So that's that. So let's uh, let's just put it in the top level folder, pCloud. Now you have pCloud on the left and S3, my bucket here, and that on the right. Lovely. Now what you can do, uh, two cool things in uh, in MultiCloud here. Um, you have a number of different sync types. Now the simple one is a simple sync, as the name says. It's just going to move stuff uh, across, basically. Added, modified, deleted, uh, will be replicated, uh, and in the target. So this is actually fine for simple backups, right? You're just going to literally move across from source to target. Um, but you can go for one of these more exotic ones. Now, I did have, uh, I did use this actually to sync Google Drive and Dropbox um, for a few years, and it was kind of hard to set up. Um, the problem is when you're doing this in, Google, in Dropbox, and people are um you're telling them there's a sync and they don't listen and 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 add stuff on the target namely dropbox uh that's when stuff gets a bit confusing but it did work in the end um so that's for backup purposes the simple sync would work okay if you're using my approach here i've just shown of creating three points uh obviously this will add to your s3 storage cost because uh you know you're going to have three times the the data moving across but as I said, it's relatively relatively small money we're talking about here. Mirror sync um, will uh, will basically knock off extra files on the target side. Uh, so if you have stuff being added to target, this will destroy them uh, when it syncs. Move sync. Um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run through the rest of these pretty quickly. Uh, I'm not actually totally uh, a couple of these I've not used like move. Uh, oh, move actually just moves it. It literally will. Um, move everything from source to target. Um, cumulative sync uh, will ignore deletions in source. They will not, the deletions will not occur on the target. Update sync, um, the target will be deleted and then that modified, added and modified files in the source will be transferred to the target directory. Uh, now, incremental backup and full backup are relevant for, the, for this backup discussion. Um, so presuming that you know the you know people watching this video know the difference between full backups uh, and incremental backups, um, this one will create a source directory just for the incremental. So 
that could work with some people. So in other words, you you'd have um, you, you know you could take a main or first snapshot and then uh, put the incremental backups into their own folders, and that will that will create the folders automatically. Um, that might be a little bit tricky for restoring stuff. Uh, but the final one here is the full backup. Um, now this will kind of do the job I was talking about, except the problem is, and this is why I'm telling you about this, the daily, weekly, monthly approach. Um, this will do it every single time. So if you set this up to run weekly, let's say, on a schedule, um, you will eventually end up with 52 uh, weekly, and this will batch them into their own folder. You'll end up with 52 folders in here and yeah that could end up to something substantial in data and it will just accumulate and accumulate um, until such time as you as you stop it so sim simple to three ones kind of control sets the amount of snapshots you want to keep uh, in the target cloud so let's just just to show how this works right I already have have done this process yesterday um, finally here's where here's where you can set a schedule you can run this up to three times daily um, you can run this uh, weekly on a certain day and set a certain time. I can, and you can do multiple options here, like run it every Monday, Tuesday, and finally you can run it. You can run it on a certain day of the month, and this is just basically, I guess, creating creating you know cron jobs on the uh, on MulCloud server. But let's say I'm just going to do this. Um, I can set it for you know I can create a weekly job over here, save schedule, and that's really it. Um, what you can do then is you can either add, add this to your task list and sync now or you can uh, just add it to the task. So I'm, I'm going to actually start the sync and just show you how this works. Now you need to click on this guy up here, task manager, and uh, you can actually see all your uh, all your sync jobs in progress over here. And as you can see, um, I have uh, this is just started and you can click down into details and you can see um, it gives you a whole report here, how many files, it's at the kind of uh, file checking stage. It tells you uh, basically, you know, your uh, the, the time left and the elapsed time and the start time and everything. All the details are there as well. Um, so that is really it. And the final thing to say is that you can get an email alert. Um, I'm just going to take that off. So that basically you'll get an email when it's finished. Um, so that is basically... Um, that is basically how it works. Uh, MulCloud, as I said, I do have um, question marks about the the security of it. But if that if that were not something of particular um, concern to you, and you're happy with transferring stuff, um, you know, between um, between between two cloud buckets over a protocol you're happy with, um, then I think it's a it's a very good tool. There aren't really many tools uh, like it on the market um, that I'm familiar with, at least. Um, and it's certainly, I, I, I will say this, that it's very, very reliable. Um, I've had a couple of things running for years at this point. And um, when we were looking at syncing a Google Drive and a Dropbox, um, a few different, tried a few different tools. And really, MulCloud was the only one that did the, did the job uh, very, very capably every time without any problems. That's it. Uh, that's my video for today. If you have any, uh, any questions or thoughts or feedback or anything like that, uh, my email address or just go on to my website Daniel Rosell 2 L's and Rosell R-O-S-E-H as the Americans say or H as the British say H-I-L-L dot C-O dot A-L thank you for checking out the video